In this presentation, we want to um, start to tailor the discussions that we are going to have over the next couple of weeks on using Excel to analyze practice, um, practice data for either single case designs or group designs. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at the YouTube uh, movies um, on using Excel. Uh, there was one that was a basic presentation to Excel and a second one on intermediate Excel. It turns out Excel is actually quite complicated. Uh, we will give you about uh, 2%, uh, maybe less, of what you can actually do with Excel. And, and we also have found that many students have had prior experiences with Excel. So if that's true, this will be sort of a brush up for you. Um, for some of you, it might actually be brand new. Um, the uh, version of Excel that we're using is Office 365, or it's also Excel 2016. And um, you actually have this uh, available to you through the university. You can download a copy of uh, Microsoft. Actually, it's Microsoft Office, so you could get Word and Excel and PowerPoint in a, in a package. It's really a good deal, and it's basically free. So you can take advantage of that. I believe there's a link in the content um, in the class that... that um, that um, tells you how to do that. So, um, actually, Excel is is pretty cool. It's um, um, once you catch on to it, it's easy to use. It's um, uh, it's got good capacities and it's flexible. Um, so we we um, we think it's a good tool to um, t to teach our students um, as they analyze practice data. So. Today we want to have a conversation about uh, using Excel for a single case design. We're going to do a simple interrupted uh, line graph um, using an example, some, an example that you might find in a case. Um, you can see our example person is Jill, um, and we're tracking her, uh, her scores on a, on a GAD7 um, instrument that we also have shared with you on the site. So it's actually quite a, quite a nice generalized anxiety disorder scale that's uh, free. So in case you're dealing with a client who's anxious, you might consider it. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, let's, um, let's see how we do this. It's really um, honest. Uh, once again, it's very straightforward. So, so this, is, um, this is Jill's uh, data. Um, you can see that we have designated weeks in column A and Jill's scores in column B. And you can see that they're time ordered um, from week one. Actually, it doesn't continue, but it's through week four. So it's sort of top to bottom. The data are set up, and this is kind of an important thing to keep in mind. The data are set up to correspond to stages in our um, evaluation design for Jill. So um, weeks one through five would be baseline data. Uh, weeks one through 12 in this second block are actually the intervention period. And then weeks one through four in this third block are a, represent a return to baseline um, condition. So this would be called a reversal design. These little breaks in the um, in the data are actually quite helpful in in uh, graphing in in Excel. Um, it, 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 the 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 data will actually be uh, chunked into these sections in the graph, and I'm going to show you that in one second. So it's really if you've got um, if you've got stages in a in, uh, w that you're using with a client, an ABA or an ABC or whatever it might be, um, actually putting these in can be quite helpful. So, so what we want to learn how to do today um, is really this straightforward. We want to go from Jill's data to Jill's um, progress chart, which is on this tab. So you can see that I'm down at the bottom here tabbing. So this would represent a sort of Jill's completed, uh, completed case. Um, and you can see that it lays out very nicely. Um, I've drawn some lines that give us, uh, that, are, that are good visual references for thinking about um, uh, our sort of data analysis, if you will. We're actually going to talk a little bit more at length about that. So um, this would be a goal line, and this would be the expected rate of change line um, if, um, 
you know, if Jill was making progress, and we're, we're going to talk, actually, we'll talk more at length about it, but that's what those lines represent. And then these lines are really just sort of cosmetic lines that separate the um, the data into uh, our, our various sections, as are these um, labels down here. They just sort of give you some visual references. So you don't have to dress up data like this. Well, we're going to actually want you to dress it up for your final project. Um, but um, when you're dealing with a client, you wouldn't necessarily um, have to do this. Although it does, it does help uh, when, uh, when you're thinking about sort of doing a, a data analysis to have some of these um, references. So today we want to go one more time. We want to go from here to here. And we want to see how that works. So let's just get started. So um, there, in Excel, you will find, uh, and some of you may know, that there are 100 ways to get things done. So we're going to give you just one, uh, what, we, what we have discovered to be or found to be um, uh, um, a pretty straightforward way to do this. So, um, so just follow along. So the first thing we want to do is highlight the, um, the data that we're interested in graphing. And we're going to actually grab the columns A and B, and we click and hold on that. You can see it's grayed out there. Um, so we want to select that, that um, <clears throat> data array. Um, so once we get that selected, we want to go to Insert in the in this tab. Um, there are actually, I'm not sure what you're going to see. There's actually two sets of sort of menus. So, but this is really the Excel tab that we'll use um, to to get our graph done. So we want to go to Insert and and if you remember, this is called a tab and this is called a ribbon. And if you go over in your ribbon, you will come to an area called Recommended Charts. Um, it turns out that the charts are sort of laid out here. Um, probably depends on how much screen you have, but in this instance, you can see that there are bar charts, column charts, bar charts, pie charts, and that sort of thing. We're going to select the line chart, and we want to do the line chart with markers. So, so we'll just click on that, and you'll see what happens. So. What does happen is that you get a chart that's um, that's actually, a, you know, it could be a good enough chart. I mean, you can actually see that Jill's making some uh, good changes over time. You can see that from the data, as a matter of fact, uh, the scores. But you can see that um, that she's, you know, has a stable baseline and her scores have been going down except for a little peak here. And then her baseline scores seem to be pretty reasonable. So. We could um, just live with that, but um, and we could even annotate that, but we find that it's better to actually move the chart into its own tab. So if you go up to the right-hand corner of the screen and click on Move Chart, um, you'll see what happens. When you click on that, it will take you to a, um, a, a dialog that asks you where you want to put the new chart, and you can um, put it in... It, you, you, what you'll do is put it in a new sheet. You can see that it's an object that's embedded in this sheet. So now we want to put it in a new new uh, sheet. So, and you can give it a name. So let's call it a new chart. Um, cleverly, uh, you can call it anything you want, and then click OK. And you can see at the bottom um, that um, that you have a new tab. And it's called a new chart, and you can see that the data are. Um, you know, bigger in some ways, and uh, I, you know, kind of a little bit more accessible. So, so now we're happy. We've got a chart, and uh, and um, and we're making some progress. Um, so, so um, a couple of things that you'll probably want to do, uh, and you do some of those things um, through adding chart elements. Let's say we want to give our axes titles. So if you'll click on an add chart, the add chart, um, uh, if you on that down carrot, and you can see axis titles, it will ask you for ask you for uh, primary horizontal um, axis, and you can see that's down here. I hope you can follow along, and so we might type type in week. Uh, do we have to have these? Not really, um, but sometimes it's not bad to have annotations. 
Um, and then let's go to, and, and we want you to for the final project. I shouldn't say the, those, we don't want these to be optional. We want you to do this. And then for the vertical axis, you can see here, um, and you can type in, uh, maybe call it Jill's um, GAD 7 score. Uh, I think I got that right. I didn't. Oh, that wasn't even close. Sorry. Quit laughing. There we go. <laughs> All right. And then maybe give it a title. We could call it Jill's. And you can just click on this. You can call it Jill's uh, um, progress chart. I think that's what we call it on the other. All right. And then we got this. So, so yeah, good. So we're making uh, we're making some headway. Um, we might want to um, one of the things that we might be interested. In, I'm going to make sure here actually that the all right we have those here. Uh, it didn't look quite right, um, but um, so the other you know one of the other things we want to do. So these are all objects and they all have attributes. So if you double click, for example, on the vertical axis, if you double click on that. It will take you into a dialogue that will um, uh, that gives you um, various attribute options. So in this case, for example, I want to set our scale um, in units of two, and you can see that that actually uh, changes um, here. So we want to change it, in, and then I'm going to give it a maximum value of 24. So we can do that, um, set that up, uh, basically. Um, and then you can click on, actually, once you get into this, you don't have to X out of this. You can actually then um, click. We're going to do a little something with this axis. So if you click on that, uh, this is going to let you format this axis. And I want you to go to the... Um, uh, this tab right here, usually the size and properties tab, and I want to show you what you can do. This is actually really cool. If you've got, um, if you've got um, labels that are not fitting very well, you can, you can. Uh, you can change their, sorry about that, you can change their angle. Um, so uh, it's just kind of a nice little um, cosmetic thing. So, um, so let's X out of that. All right, we're looking good. We're looking good. So we want to, um, uh, let's see, we want to draw some lines basically. So let's, um, Let's figure out how to do that. We want to have some of our our horizontal lines and our vertical lines, and we want to draw some lines. So let's go into let's go to format. And when you click on the format, you're going to see something called insert shapes. This little area here called insert shapes. And if you click on the down caret, you can select a number of shapes. In this case, we want to select uh, the line shape and then if you take your tool over um, you'll see a crosshair now I'm going to give you a little hint if you hold the shift key down when you draw the line it will draw the line straight I don't know about any of you who draw lines but I sometimes have trouble getting them straight um, so good so we have a line and that's what we're after so if we double click on that uh, line, we can do uh, something that we might want to think is important. Let's, um, let, for example, let's give it a different, uh, let's give it a pretty color. Oh, that's an ugly color. Let's give it a, let's make it yellow. Oh, that's even uglier. Let's make it purple. I don't know. Is that better? And then let's click on the width. Let's just um, thicken it up a little bit. So good. Um, uh, you can, I don't have good color taste, but you, and then you can kind of, you know, move this around. Uh, you can tell it's selected if we've got the little handles on it. 
that's an ugly color, but I know you guys can do better. So, so we could, we need two of them. So we could do it a couple ways. Um, we could draw another one, you know, select it and do it, but, but let's just do this. Let's go to home. Let's go to the home key and let's copy it. Make sure this is selected. So we'll copy it and then we'll paste it and you can see another one pops up and then we can click and drag it over here. How about that? Good. Ugly. I know. I know. So we need another line too. So let's go back into our, um, um, our, our format. Oh, all right. Let's make sure. Let's go here. Let's X out of here. And let's go back into our format tab. Let's get our format tab. There we go. You got it. I'll tell you what, just a little quick, um, a little quick thing. Sometimes if this menu starts to change up here, uh, watch what happens when I do this. If I click off the chart, that menu changes. I hope you can see that. So in order to get this sort of the chart area context menu, you have to click on the chart. And once it's, it's selected, you can tell by the handles, you will get this um, the, some of the menu items that you need, including the format item and the insert shapes um, selection. So let's click on that and let's, we're going to put in a, um, a line and we're going to, um, I'm going to select shift and we're going to pull that line. Oh, heck. We're going to move this line over here. I ran out of room on my desk. I'm sorry about that. So let's double click on that and let's make it green. I don't know why. Let's make it green and then let's make it a little bit. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. So, so good. So that's a reference line. That's our goal line actually uh, that we're interested in um, setting. <clears throat> because we know a score of 10 on the GAD7 is actually a score that indicates anything of 10 or below indicates that, that you know, somebody might be, be experiencing anxiety, but it's not necessarily uh, uh, going to be um, maybe clinically relevant. It's, um, it's a goal that we could, a score of 10 could be a treatment goal that would actually make some sense given the items in the instrument. And that's set up by the, uh, uh, by the people who developed the um, GAD7. We also might want to draw a line um, in, in, let's go here and let's get back into our format. And we had actually had the tool up, but let's just do this again. Another, another um, uh, line that we might want to draw is this rate of change line. And this is sort of a helpful line. It gives us a sense of whether a person is, given the baseline, uh, whether a person is actually making an adequate rate of change over time. You can see that Jill actually, is, she has a little spike here. So um, that can be a helpful reference. And this is actually a median value. Um, and we're gonna show you how to do that in another, in another, um, uh, presentation of Excel and how to use, how to analyze data. But um, I happen to know that the median value for this data are 18. So if we double click on that and let's uh, change it to red and let's make it a little thicker. There we go. So we have a nice rate of change. Ah, pretty cool. So we're coming together. It's looking a little bit like our progress chart from before. Um, yeah, it's not bad. I think we had the same colors and things. So, so we're good. So we're doing good. One last thing we might want to do is to put in a text box. And since we have our shape, uh, our format shape thing up, let's just grab it here. It happens to be available to us. So let's go grab um, a, a text. Let's get our text box from here and we'll go down and we have to draw a text box first. Uh-oh. Let's go back to format and insert shape and go here 
and then now let's draw the text area. My bad on that, you guys. I should go back and change it, but I think you can figure it out. So, uh, so let's let's put in baseline, and we can actually format it here. Um, so we got a baseline, and if we click off of that, we're good on that. And then what we can do is go to uh, select this, and you have to actually click on it there. Now it's selected, and we copy it, and then paste it. And you can see that it'll pop up here, so we can go over here and put it over here. And then we might want to paste it again and go here and... Um, type in intervention. So good. You don't have to do that, but it's actually kind of nice. You could also uh, type in A, B, A if you wanted to, but you know I think actually using the labels themselves is um, uh, more helpful. This might, uh, this actually is, this probably technically should be return to baseline. So you might, you might want to um, put that in in case it's confusing for somebody. I mean, I'll know what you're talking about, but you could, you know, if you can put it in as a return to baseline, you can actually fill it in and then you can move this around. So, all right, good, good. Very nice, very nice. So we really have our, um, our, our progress chart here um, uh, is really pretty good. The only thing we might want to do is give it our vertical axis. You can see that we don't actually have the axis here. You don't really actually technically have to have it. In fact, I kind of like it like that, as a matter of fact. That's just me. Um, so so that's, um, that's how easy it is, honestly. You know, you have data, make sure you set your data up um, carefully. So, and make breaks in it when, if they actually make some sense. You just click and highlight it and um, go to um, insert um, uh, line graph and it will draw it and then move the chart. Once you, get the, once you get that graph done, you can move the chart into a new tab and then you, then you can actually um, go to work on it and um, do the annotations. So using Excel, simple. Students have had great success uh, tracking real life, real life, real life clients, real live clients um, using Excel. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, we are obviously available. Um, give us a call. Whoever's teaching the class, uh, you know, give your instructor a call, give me a call. And um, um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions um, about how to do this. So that's Excel for single case design.